Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this hat here, but I wanna tell you just a few things about it first before we get started. So this would be an adult size hat. Um, so first we'll start off with the top. I did put this little detail at the top and now not everybody's gonna like that. I wanted this to have a more flat top as opposed to it being rounded. Now that can easily be fixed if you do not want that detail. So after you finish doing the uh, top of the hat, the increasing of the hat, um, I do three rows of single crochet, rows seven, eight, and nine, and that's what creates this brim, or this little detail right here, um, which makes the top more flat. Now, if you prefer it to be more rounded, just eliminate rows, those three single cro crochet rows, seven, eight, and nine, and just leave them off completely, and go in at row six and jump straight to row 10, and it'll just go completely around there. So it's easy to fix that if you do not like that. Um, once you get to the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. Just leave those rows of single crochet off, act like they're not even there, and just continue with half double crochets. It's actually very easy. It is all half double crochets and single crochets. Now, as far as the brim goes, you can make it as wide or as, um, you know, short as you like. This brim is semi, stands up um, on its own, kind of like semi-floppy, I would say. It does pretty well because it's made, we're using two strands of a medium weight number four cotton. So it holds up a bit, but it's still kind of a little bit floppy here and there. Now, um, you can add millinery wire to it or some type of wire around the edge. You single crochet it along the edge and that will make it where it stands straight and you can actually bend it to the shape that you like. I have two hats that I've done that to, and I will link their tutorials below to where you can watch uh, to see for, for certain how you add wire to a brim to make it completely stiff. Otherwise, I think it does pretty good on its own. I do like the way that it kind of is a little bit floppy on its own. Also, the flowers, they were just an afterthought. Those are just hot glued on. You don't have to do that. Um, I bought those at Walmart and just, you know, hot glued them on just for decoration. But yeah, that's it. It's very customizable, you know, like I said, you can leave this off if you don't want the flat top and you want this detail gone, very easy to take off. Just eliminate those three single crochet rows, add a wire if you choose, don't add a wire, but let's go ahead and do this. Hi everybody. So here's the yarn I'm going to be using. I'm going to be mixing in a matching yarn. <laughs> so uh, I just grabbed some none of them are the same brands or anything not even the same colors but for the main portion of the hat in case you're interested now these are all just four medium weight number four um, cotton yarns so for the main portion of the hat I use peaches and cream 100% cotton in the color rosemary and I paired it with this green which is Pamir Pamir is an 85 cotton 15 polyester blend um, but the color of this one is called sage. So I got rosemary and sage and a peaches and a cream and a premiere. So these two are going to be paired together for the main portion. And for the white uh, detail that you see, I have a lion brand Pima cotton. And I'm going to pair it, uh, hold it together with the peaches and cream. They're both four weight cottons. This is Pima. It's a little softer, but it's still both 100% uh, cotton. The color of this one is vintage and the color of this one is uh, ecru. That's just in case anybody wanted to know. I'm a mixing and a matching. Not even, well, kind of matching I guess. And then I'm going to be using a size J which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Okay so you're going to need about <laughs> I use two colors, but total, I'm going to say you're going to need about 300 in, to make it the size I did with uh, the larger brim. Probably about 350 just to be safe yards because we are double stranding. We're using two strands at the same time, so that takes more yarn. You can also, you don't have to use a uh, four weight cotton. You can use a uh, four weight acrylic as well, cotton or acrylic. Either one that you choose will work. Um, just, just as good. All right, so I got my two yarns together here, my main color, and let's go ahead and we'll start off with a slip knot on our hook. And let's work a chain of four. 
one, two, three, four. Now you can use the magic circle here if you like. I don't, I don't like. So <laughs> I'm gonna chain four and I'm going to slip stitch into the first chain to form a ring. So we're starting at the top of the hat like this. Okay, now we're gonna chain one like that. And what we're gonna do is we're going to be working, this can be a pretty simple hat, we're gonna be working half double crochets. So I'm gonna work 10 half double crochets through the center of the ring. So that chain one, remember, does not count as a stitch, so I'm gonna yarn over, go through the center of the ring, and draw up a loop, and you'll see I'll have, I'll have three loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and go through all three loops, and that will make my half double. Well, I want to do that 10 times, so that would be number one. And you can scoot them over as you go. There's two, three, four, and we want to keep going until we reach 10. Five. All right, so I have done 10 half double crochets. So I've made it to the end here, back to where I started. I'm gonna, you're gonna need a stitch marker here because I'm gonna be working in a continual round, which means I will not end my rounds by slip stitching. I will just work continuously around and around. That will eliminate any seam in the hat whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a stitch marker right here. So I know where I end and where I begin. I just use a piece of yarn, but you can use whatever. Now uh, you need to, we're gonna jump over and we're going to put two half double crochets into the first half double crochet, not the chain one. So right here is the chain one. We wanna jump right over here to this first half double and you wanna do it pretty tight. And we're gonna put two half double crochets into that first one. Oh. That was too tight. Drop my yarn, messing up, embarrassing. Okay, there's one. And there is two. Now I'm gonna work around and I'm gonna put two half double crochets in every stitch until I get back to my starting point or back to my stitch marker. It'll be two in each of the stitches all the way around. Just like that. Okay, I've made it back to my stitch marker and at the end of round two, you should have a total of 20 stitches. So we're gonna go ahead and move our stitch marker up and we're gonna start again when we're gonna start with round three. So this is our first stitch down here. It looks a little low, but that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put one half double into that stitch, just one. And then we're gonna put two half doubles into the next stitch. Like that. And then we're gonna repeat that all the way around for round three. So the next stitch, we'll just put one half double. And then the next stitch, we'll get two half doubles. And repeat again, one half double into the next. And then the next stitch we'll put two half doubles. So that's a repeat for round three. One half double, two half double, one half double, two half double, all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker. All right, I've made it back to my stitch marker at the end of round three. Your last stitch should have had two half double crochets in it, and you should have a total of 30 stitches now. So let's go ahead and move our marker up and we'll start round four. Now round four, 
we are going to put one half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So one half double into the next, one half double into the next, and then the next stitch will get two half double crochets into the same stitch. So there's one, and there's two. And that's the repeat for round four. One half double in each of the next two stitches. There's one, and then one in the next, and then two half doubles into the next. So we're just gonna repeat this pattern all the way around for round four. It's one half double, one half double, two half doubles. One half double, one half double, two half doubles, all the way around until we get back over here to our stitch marker. All right, I've made it to the end of round four. You should have ended with two half doubles there in your last stitch, and you should have a total of 40 stitches now. So let's go ahead and move our stitch marker up and start round five. Now we're going to put one half double crochet, one half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So there's one there, one in the next, one in the next, and then the next one will get two half doubles into the same stitch. So this will be the repeat for round five. One half double in each of the next three stitches. And then two half doubles into the next. One half double in each of the next three, and then two half doubles into the next. And you repeat that pattern all the way around until you get back to your stitch marker. All right, I've made it to the end of round five, and again, you should have had two half double crochets into your last stitch and a total of 50 stitches now. Let's go ahead and move our marker up, and we're gonna go around again. This time we're gonna put one a double crochet, in, or one half double crochet, I apologize, half double crochet into the first four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and there's four, and then two half doubles into the next. And that'll be the repeat now for round six. One half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. One, two, <clears throat> Sorry for my kids. Three, four, and then two half double crochets into the next. And this is the pattern we're going to repeat for round six. One half double into the next four, and then two half doubles into the next, all the way around until we make it back over here to our stitch marker. All right, so I've made it to the end of round six, and you should have ended with two half double crochets there, and you should have a total of 60 stitches. So let's, this will be the top part of a hat. Well, most of it. And we're at right about seven inches or so. You wanna be right around that if you can, within probably a quarter inch or so, if that's possible. And now what we're gonna do for round seven is we're gonna work around a single crochet but we're gonna be working it into the front loop only. So if you look at the stitches, you see that each stitch has two loops to it. The one closest to you is the front loop and the one closest away, furthest from you is the back loop. So I'm at my stitch marker, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. So we're not gonna be working half double crochets on around seven. We have 60 stitches now, we're gonna start around seven. We're gonna work single crochet, but we're gonna work it in the front loop only. So I'm gonna grab that front loop, not the back, just the front, but make sure you get both pieces of yarn since we are working with two strands of yarn. And I'm gonna single crochet. And I'm gonna put one single crochet, see that how I'm just going through that front loop of the stitch? In the front loop of every stitch all the way around 
trying to get at a good angle so you can see how I'm only grabbing at that front loop like that all the way around until I make it back to my stitch marker. And if you look on the opposite side, you'll see there's a ridge back there. We're going to use that ridge. But for now, we'll just continue around working one single in the front loop of every stitch. All right, I come to the end of round seven. It's okay if your work is flipping up like that, that's fine. And you still should have 60 stitches. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker up. So what we're gonna do now is for round eight, we're gonna work another round of single crochet, but we're gonna go through both loops this time. And we're gonna work one single crochet in every stitch all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker. So this is round eight. We're going through both loops, one single in every stitch until we make it back to the beginning. All right, I've made it to the end of round eight. This is what it looks like. And we still should have 60 stitches. So now we're going to be working with this uh, back loop back here that we skipped or that we didn't work in a couple rows ago. So we're going to kind of move our stitch marker up for round nine. And here's what we're going to do. So we're going to go into the next stitch. And then we're going to go down to the first back loop that we skipped, <clears throat> which if, if you look, you can see that it's right here. And we're going to go into that and then we are going to do a single crochet like that and this is what we're going to do all the way around so we're going to go into the next stitch and then we're going to look for on the back side the next back loop that we didn't go into so this one right here grab it and single crochet. Again, go into the top of the next stitch and then flip your work to the back and you'll be able to see that back loop right there that we skipped. Grab it and then we will single crochet. And as you can see, it's starting to make a little bit of a ridge at the top. It'll be kind of a defining point from the um, top of the hat from the sides of the hat. So I'm going to continue doing this all the way around going into this stitch and then the back loop that is right underneath that stitch and single crocheting. It'll also give the top of the hat a little bit more stability. Again the next stitch and then flip your work and you you'll be able to see the back loop the next one right there and single crochet. So I'm going to do this all the way around until I get back to my stitch marker. It's not hard. It might be a little awkward at first trying to grab that back loop, but you'll get it down. Just like that. And there you go. You can see that popping up there just a bit. All right, I'll meet back up with you at the stitch marker. All right, I come to the end of row nine and this is what it looks like, 60 stitches. 60 stitches is our magic number. So it's kind of funny, I guess, right now, but we do have our defining uh, piece here at the top. So now we're gonna go ahead and start 60 stitches still. Move our stitch marker back up. We're gonna start working half double crochets again and all the way around, one in every stitch. So we'll go ahead and start off, put a half double crochet, one in every stitch all the way around until we make it back to our stitch marker. And you should be able to notice the hat coming down a little bit now. So 
So this is uh, round 10 we're on. I believe. Just like that. Half double on every stitch until you make it back to your stitch marker. All right, I've made it to the end of round 10 and I have 60 stitches still. So now what I'm gonna do is pull my stitch marker up and I'm gonna repeat round 10 for a few more rounds. So I'm just gonna be working rounds of one half double crochet in every stitch. And when I make it back to my stitch marker, I will always have 60 stitches and then I'll just move my marker up and go again. So I'm on round 11 right now and I will let you know in just a minute how many total rounds I do of half double crochets. So remember one in every stitch, make it back to your stitch marker, 60 stitches every round, and then move your marker up and continue again. And this is round 11. All right, so I've done a total of 14 rounds and that is starting from round one all the way up. So remember round 10 was where we started doing the half double crochets for the main portion of the hat. So here's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm gonna switch collars now. So I've made it back around and I have 60 stitches on my hook and I'm going to do a collar change here. I'm all tangled up. That's the worst part with working with two strands. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch and then I am going to slip stitch into the next. And then I'm going to uh, clip this yarn off like that. Pull it through, but don't make a knot in it like that. And then I'm gonna move my stitch marker right over to here, because now we're gonna start here. But we're gonna start with our new color. So um, I'm gonna try to move these greens out of the way so they don't tangle, because I do wanna use them again in a bit. All right, now, if you don't wanna switch colors, you don't have to. But I'm gonna go ahead and switch up here. And um, I'm gonna start in the, actually let me move that stitch marker in the next stitch here. So this is where we slip stitch. I'm gonna start in the next stitch. I'm gonna hide these green tails as I go along. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by pulling my yarn through and I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to go back into the same stitch and work a half double crochet. And now I'm gonna work a half double crochet in every stitch. So I'm just gonna repeat the one half double crochet in every stitch, but I'm doing it with a different color now. And this is round 15 that we're on. I'm trying to hide those tails as we go. Make sure you hide those, if you switch colors, the ones that you clipped off, we didn't, and I said not to put a knot in it, make sure you hide them um, for as long as you can go. That way they don't come undone. They won't, they shouldn't, they won't anyways, but just to be safe. So I'm just gonna carry them along with me and crochet them in like this. If you want to sew them in um, later, you can do that as well instead of uh, crocheting them in like I am. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue round 15, working one half double crochet in every stitch, which, which with my other color, I got my two strands of my two different colors of white that I'm using. And I'll meet back up with you. All right, so I've made it to the end of round 15, and you still should have 60 stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and end this round, and I'm gonna switch colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slip stitch into the next stitch. Like that, and pull that yarn out. Like that. Remember, you should have 60 stitches there. And I'm gonna bring my green back in. Now, you do not have to even switch colors if you don't want to, but that's up to you. Okay, I'm gonna start my yarn. Now what I'm gonna do is a round of single crochet um, decreases, just to tighten the hat up just a little bit before we flare the bill out. Cause sometimes if you flare the bill out, um, it will make the hat a little bit looser. So let's go ahead and tighten it up one time. So we're gonna we'll go ahead and start. Here's the stitch we slip stitched into. Let's start in the next stitch. And go ahead and pull your two, I'm using my main color is green. So use your two strands, pull them through and we're gonna chain one. Now what we're gonna do is 10 single crochets in a row. So going right back into the same stitch that you just uh, started in, we're gonna single crochet. 
And we want to do that 10, 10 times. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and there's 10 in a row. So now we're going to do a decrease, a single crochet decrease. And if you've never done one of these before, they are very easy and they're worked over two stitches. So we're gonna go into the next stitch and just draw up a loop and pull it through. And then we're gonna go directly into the next stitch and draw up a loop and pull it through. And you got three loops on your hook there. And now we're gonna yarn over and go through all three loops. So that took two stitches and made it into one. So that's a single crochet decrease. Now we're gonna continue along and we're gonna repeat that pattern all the way around. So we're gonna do one single crochet in the next 10 stitches. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now we're going to do our single crochet decrease again. That's worked over two stitches. So we go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, and then into the next one, draw up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all three. So I'm gonna repeat that pattern of 10 single crochets and then a single crochet decrease all the way around back to our starting point. All right, so I've made it to the end of round 16 here. Your last stitch should have been a decrease stitch there. And we're gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into our first single crochet. And then I'm going to switch colors again, back to the white, and that's what I'm gonna make my brim in. So now we're gonna start the brim. So we're gonna switch colors off here. All right, so you have 55 stitches now. And let's begin round 17. So I'm gonna bring in my two strands of my white and I'm gonna start in the stitch next to the one that I just slip stitched into. And we're gonna do half double crochets and but we're gonna be increasing. So we're gonna start off with a chain one, which and then we're gonna go back into that same stitch and half double crochet. So we want to do four half double crochets in a row. So that would be number one, two, three, and there's four. And then the next one, we're going to put two half double crochets in the same stitch. And that will be the repeat now for round 17. One half double crochet into the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, four and then two half doubles into the next so i am going to repeat this pattern of one half double into the next four and then two half doubles into the next one half double into the next four and then two half doubles into the next all the way around until i make it back to my starting point and that's where i'll meet back up with you Two, three, four, and then two. And you'll start to take notice the more rounds that we get, the more your brim will start to flare out. All right, so I made it to the end of round 17 and you should have ended with two double crochets in your last stitch and you should have a total of 66 stitches now. So now we're gonna bring back our stitch marker and we're going to grow the brim. So I'm going to put my stitch marker here. 
and I'm going to start now for row around 18 I'm going to put a one half double crochet into the next five stitches and then two half doubles into the next so there's one two three four five and then two half doubles in the next and that's what we're going to repeat all the way around so again one half double into the next five there's one two three four and five and then two half doubles into the next so i'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until i get back to my starting point all right i've made it to the end of round 18 and you should have ended with two half doubles into your last stitch i'm going to go ahead and move my stitch marker up and now i'm going to put one half double crochet into the next um six stitches and then the next six and then a two half doubles into the next i'm sorry so there's one two three four five six and then two half doubles into the next and that's what we're going to repeat now for round 19. one half double into the next six one two three four five six and then two half doubles into the next and i'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until i make it back to my starting point all right i've made it to the end of row 19 you should have 88 stitches now you should have ended with two uh, half doubles into your last stitch let's go around again let's move our stitch marker up for round 20 and this time it'll be seven half double crochets in a row and then two half double crochets into the next so there's two three four five six seven and then two into the next and this is the pattern we're going to repeat now for round 20 one half double into the next seven and then two half doubles into the next one after that all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker all right i've made it to the end of round 20 you should have 99 stitches now and i'm going to go around again now you can make your brim as long or as short as you want um that's completely up to you but i'm going to do it again so i'm going to move my stitch marker up and i'm going to do one half double crochet into the next eight stitches now there's eight and then two half doubles into the next so this is the pattern i'm going to repeat for round 21. one half double into the next eight and then two half doubles into the next all the way around until you get back to your stitch marker
All right, I've made it to the end of round 21 and you should have 120 stitches now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, tie this off and I'm gonna switch colors again. I'm not gonna make my brim any wider. I'm gonna go around it though, edge it with a row of uh, single crochet with my other color. So I'm gonna go ahead and single crochet into the next stitch and then slip stitch into the next like that and then tie this off. And then you can take that stitch marker out and we'll go ahead and start our other color into the spot next to where we just slip stitched right here. Pull it through. Make sure you have both. You got, we're still working with both strands. I'm going to chain one, go back into that same stitch and single crochet. Now I'm not going to do any increases. I'm just going to work around putting one single crochet into every stitch all the way around. So when I get back around, I still should have 120 stitches. So I'll meet back up with you when I get back around. One single crochet in every stitch. All right, we're gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into our first single crochet. Like I said, you should have 120 stitches now. I'm gonna be finished. I'm gonna hide these tails and I am going to be done with my hat. I hope that you enjoyed my tutorial and I hope that you were able to follow along okay. I think that looks pretty cool. I like it. Now remember, if you make this or anything else, uh, if any of my tutorials, you could uh, show a picture on my Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page or my Instagram. I'd really like to see, and I have a lot of room here to show you. I'd really like to see a picture of it. Uh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this sun hat here. See, mine's got some bling on it. Um, it would have looked better in a darker color hat, but I make do with what I have. So, um, there's a ribbon in the back. You can see. You can, of course, adjust that. Don't have to put that on. You can make this an all ribbon or you can leave it a plain hat. It's very, very easy to make. It's made basically all with half double crochet in the round. There is no visible seam to this hat. And it does have a reverse single crochet edge, which is not hard to do. I'll show you how to do it. It's very easy. And if you can't get that down, regular single crochet edge will be fine. It does have a wire in it to keep it up straight. But I'll tell you what, uh, with the yarn that I use, which is the Lion Brand Rewind, even without the wire in it, it, it didn't do too bad as far as floppiness. Now, um, continue watching and I'll show you, um, tell you about other, what, you, what all you need and about other types of yarns that you could substitute if you don't have this yarn. Okay, let's go ahead and get started, okay? Okay, for this project you're going to need, um, I'm using Lion Brand Rewind Tape Yarn. Now there are 219 yards in this ball and it's about 215 yards of, of this yarn is what I, what I went through, pretty much all of it. Or if you want to make the brim of your hat bigger, you're definitely going to need more. Um, the color I am using is called Elm. Now you don't have to use this yarn. So other yarn options would be for this this hat would be um, a raffia yarn. The paper style yarn would work well. Um, also, you can use a regular bulky five yarn. Um, it's if you do not 
um, use the wire though it will be really floppy so if you do if you don't mind that look that's fine um, but if you do use a, a regular bulky five yarn just remember that um, if you want the brim to really stick out you're going to need to use the wire so um, that's the yarn that I used and here's the wire that I'm talking about I'll show you I purchased this on Amazon so it's a millinery wire it's what is used for mainly used for rims of hats so uh i got the 19 gauge and i have i got a one yard of it i actually wish i would have got a little bit more than one yard but to make the hat brim a little bit longer but i'm gonna make do with what i got you see it was only a dollar 95. i think there was a little bit of shipping on there but not much so like i said this did come from amazon so you can look it up just look up millinery wire uh 19 gauge and I, like i said my i have one yard of it so that is something that you're going to need and then the bling i'm using is a bridal belt also purchased off of amazon they have if you want to put this on you know it's always just optional you know if you know me well i like blingy things so this is the bridal belt they have these all different kinds all different sizes and all different colors of belts so i what i'll uh, going to attach this to my hat as you've seen um and with fabric glue fabric tack you also need this which i believe i either bought at amazon or at walmart i can't remember i think both places have it but i will be gluing this on to my hat and remember this is always optional but everything that you see besides the yarn was purchased at amazon the wire the belt and the glue which I, i'm almost certain it was amazon but i know amazon has it walmart does too i believe and then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six and a half a millimeter crochet hook. If you see that. Now I don't recommend using any different size, regardless whether you use the tape yarn, the rewind tape yarn, or a raffia star yarn, or even a bulky five regular yarn. Always use the six and a half millimeter. And let's go ahead and get started on this. All right, let's go ahead and start with a slip knot on our hook. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and work a chain of three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna slip stitch back into the first stitch to form a ring. If you want to use the magic circle here, that's fine. Okay, now we're gonna do a chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch, doesn't count as anything. So we're just gonna pretend like it's not there. We are gonna work 10 half double crochets through the center of the ring that we just made so half doubles is where we yarn over we're going to go through that ring draw up a loop and then we're going to yarn over we'll have three loops on our hook and go through all three at the same time so that's our half double we want to do 10 so that was one two three four all right, once you get your 10 half double crochets done, you can usually pull that tail and it'll close up that circle a little bit more and then we can finish closing it up the rest of the way. Now we're gonna be working in a continual round, <clears throat> which means we won't be slip stitching uh, to close our rounds. So you wanna use a stitch marker to, that way you know where you begin and where you end. I'm just gonna use a piece of yarn as a stitch marker. So I'm gonna place it right here after my 10th half double crochet and now I'm going to start so that was the end of round one now I'm going to start round two and what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to the first half double crochet that we made now remember we don't count that uh, chain one if you want to count back 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that way you know which one to go into this one right here is my first one there's that chain one here's my first one i'm going to go into that first one and i'm going to work two half double crochets into that same stitch so there's one and there's two now i'm going to work along i'm going to work two half double crochets into every stitch all the way around until i get back to my starting point 
So round two is two half doubles in every single stitch. All right, I made it to the end of round two, and now you should have a total of 20 half double crochets. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker up and I'm gonna begin round three. So round three, what we're gonna do is we are going to put one half double crochet into the next stitch, just one. And then the next stitch is going to get two half double crochets into the same stitch. And that'll be our repeat for round three here. One half double into the next stitch and then two half doubles into the next. One half double into the next and two half doubles into the next. And we're gonna repeat this all the way around until we make it back to our stitch marker. All right, I've come to the end of round three and you should have a total of 30 stitches and you should have ended, uh, your last stitch should have had two half double crochets in it. So we're gonna go ahead and move our marker up and we're gonna start round four. So we're gonna start off by putting one half double into the first two stitches. So we go one half double into the first stitch, one half double into the next stitch, and now the next stitch is going to get two half doubles into the same stitch. So one and two. So that's the repeat for round four. One half double into the next two stitches. So there's one there, one there, and then the next stitch will get two half doubles into the same stitch. There's one and two and we, we repeat that again one half double into the next two stitches so there's one one and then two half doubles into the next one and two now we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker Okay, I've made it to the end of round four and I should have a total of 40 stitches. Your last stitch should have had two half double crochets in it. Now we're gonna start round five by putting one half double into the next three stitches. So there's one, two, and three. And then the next stitch you'll get two half doubles into the same stitch. There's one, and two. Now we're going to repeat that all the way around. So again, we're going to put one half double into the next three stitches. There's one, two, three, and then two half doubles into the next. So I'm going to repeat this pattern of one half double, one half double, one half double, two half doubles one half double one half double one half double two half doubles all the way around until i make it back to this to my stitch marker all right i've come to the end of round five and you should have a total of 50 stitches so we're going to move our stitch marker up again we're going to do one more round of increases so round six what we're going to do is we're going to put one half double crochet into the first four stitches so there's one two three three and four and then the next stitch is going to have two half doubles into the same stitch and this will be the repeat for round six one half double into the next four stitches one two three four and then two half doubles into the next. Now we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around until we get back to our starting point. Okay, so I've made it to the end of round six and you should have a total of 60 stitches. So now round seven is actually going to be the repeat round for a little while now. So we finished increasing the top portion of our hat. So we went ahead and move our stitch marker up and now what we're going to do is put one half double crochet 
in every stitch all the way around. So mo no more increasing, it's just one half double in every stitch. And we're gonna work rounds of that one half double in every stitch. <clears throat> and eventually, after you get a few rounds going, you'll start to see your hat take uh, form as a hat. <laughs> but we'll continue this, round seven, one half double in every stitch, and I'll meet back up with you whenever we make it to our stitch marker. Okay, the end of round seven, you go ahead and pull your stitch marker up, and now we're just gonna keep repeating round seven. You should always have 60 stitches at the end of your round. So it's just rounds, like I said, this is round eight now, one half double crochet, in every stitch make it back around 60 stitches and continue again for round nine make it back around 60 stitches and you keep continuing doing rounds of one half double crochet in every stitch you'll always have 60 stitches at the end of every round okay so I have went ahead and done a total of 16 rounds and that is starting from round one a total of 16 and when I set it upright I'll give you a measurement on it <clears throat> before I add the brim so setting it up right right now it measures about five inches tall that's setting it kind of you know flat on its on its base I guess if I was to do this let's do it this way Maybe that would be easier. Better to take a measurement from. It is about six and a half inches tall. Okay, so that's about what mine is. Okay, now we're gonna make the brim. So I'm gonna go, you should have 60 stitches here. So this is round 16. So round 17 is going to be the start of the brim. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my stitch marker out and move it up. So we're gonna increase here on this round for the brim. So we're gonna start out and we're gonna do one half double crochet into the first five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and there's five. And then the next one, we're going to do an increase. So we're gonna put two half doubles into the next stitch. Just like that. And that is what we're gonna repeat all the way around for round 17. One half double into the next five. There's one, two, three, four, five and then two half doubles into the next so go ahead and repeat that pattern of one half double in the next five and then two half doubles into the next all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker all right i have made it to the end of round 17 and you should have 70 stitches now we added 10 more than we did before we had on a previous round you should have ended with two half double crochets there so this is actually the process that we're gonna do when we make the entire brim. So we're gonna go ahead and move our stitch marker up for round 18. So for the previous round, we did five half double crochets in a row, and then we did our increase stitch. Now what we're gonna do is six half double crochets in a row. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then the increase stitch would be two half doubles into the same stitch. And that's what we're gonna repeat all the way around um, for round 18. So it's very similar to the previous round, except for instead of doing five and then increase, now we're doing six half doubles and an increase. So six half doubles again in a row. And 
and then two in the next. So I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until I get back to my starting point. Don't mind if you notice that your increases, they start to dip up. We'll take care of that later when we get to the end of the brim. All right, I have made it to the end of round 18. So now you should end it in two. You'll always end in uh, two half doubles. You should have a total of 80 stitches. So every round now is going to increase by 10 stitches. So we're going to kind of repeat this, what we're doing, in the same manner until we get our brim as long as we want it to be. So the first increase round, we did five single crochets in a row, and then we did an increase. Um, and then our previous one here, we did six single crochets and then an increase. Now we're going to move our stitch marker up. And we're going to do seven single crochets in a row. And then we'll do our increase. There's seven and then two in the next. So we're going to keep repeating this increase uh, in the same, like I said, the same method. Every time you get back around, you'll have 10 more stitches at the end of each round. And you'll always start with one more half double crochet in between your increases. So this row we have seven in between our increases. The next row will have eight. And the row after that will have nine, um, just depending on how big you want your brim. Some people like a really, really long brims, and some people just, they don't want them that big. So um, just continue um, increasing in this manner that we're doing. Remember, every row will have 10 more stitches in the previous row. And remember, it will flip up here on your increase areas. That is fine. We're, don't worry about that. We're gonna, we'll take care of that. But I'm going to keep going and um, until I get my brim as long as I want it to be. And I'll meet back up with you. All right. So I have done a total starting from the very top all the way down out to the brim. So I, you can do more. But remember what I said about the millinery wire. If you're wanting to add that, you're going to make, need more. That I purchased a one yard, which is just not enough. So <laughs> you're going to need more than what... Uh, to make it any bigger. You're going to need more than that if you want to make your brim bigger. But otherwise, let's go and attach. Go ahead and attach this millinery wire. I'll show you how you do that. It's very easy. So go ahead and start. And we're going to be single crocheting it on. So actually, this actually might be just a little bit short for mine. But that's okay. We're going to make do. We're going to make do. So I'm at my stitch marker here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little overlap of the millinery wire. So excuse me it comes in this ring here so it's easier to fit form fit your hat but so here's my starting point I have about an inch or two and I'm gonna put it like right here you know at my starting uh before I get to my starting spot so probably two inches maybe over like that and then I'm gonna go maybe three inches it doesn't really matter but just so I have it left over here we'll crochet it in but just leave it over here and then we'll start um, and I'm going to just kind of single crochet now so here's my stitch marker I can move it up if you want to or you can just lose the stitch marker since we're doing single crochet now instead of half double but I'll just keep it just for the sake of keeping it yeah I'm probably over about three inches and now I'm going to start single crocheting this wire on okay so now I'm going to start and I'm going to be hold the wire so it's kind of like crocheting a tail in um, but you're holding the wire the whole time. So I'm going to grab my piece of tape yarn after I get it untangled from my wire. Jeesh. Okay. It's like I've never done this before. I have. I have. It's, it's, okay. So you go into your first stitch and it's like I said, go just go under that wire. Just like you're crocheting your tail in and single crochet like that. And then your next stitch and single crochet that wire right on and you see my extra here that i have hanging just leave that there we'll take care of that when we get back around to it and i'm going to go around putting one single crochet 
in every stitch and I'm making sure that I go around that millinery wire and single crocheting it in just like I'm crocheting a tail like that so as I go under my stitch for the single crochet I just make sure my wire is on in there too and that's what's going to hold that wire in place so I'm going to do this <clears throat> All the way around only thing i'm gonna say is it's a bit awkward how about that it's not hard at all it's really easy this is kind of awkward because the wire's circular to form fit your hat and it's just awkward but we're gonna do it so i'm gonna continue around single crocheting this wire on until i get back to my starting point well until i get back over here near near here where this is at and I'll show you what we're gonna do there okay as you can see I have went around with my millinery wire and it's pretty stiff brim now so I'm coming to the ends here now normally I would have liked them to overlap a bit more at least an inch on each side but I am cutting it very very close which is surprising I thought it would be a lot less but try to keep those two overlapped so here is our starting point remember we left about two or three inches there um, for an overlap and here is where this wire is ending just try to make sure when you stitch those together you hold them there and try to get them inside the single crochets together I know it's a little difficult seem it's a little hard because the wire is so stiff it doesn't want to move in the direction that you want it to move but just do your best to try to get them inside together so they overlap at least a little bit like I said, it would have been ideal for them to overlap at least an inch, even more, if it was possible. But that doesn't seem possible, really, with my hat, because I made the, didn't order enough millinery wire. That it, fault is on me. So, I'm going to do the best that I can to at least to get them to overlap a bit. That, and then you just continue... There, I got them overlapped in two stitches. <laughs> Hopefully that's good. Um, and then I'm going to oops, drop my yarn, work around until I get back to my starting point. And then I'm going to put a finishing edge on my hat. So just continue. This is the wire that we had overlapped from the beginning. I'm just doing my single crochet around it. And then I'm going to check it out and see. Gosh, it's awkward with this wire. How she looks with that overlap. Okay, here's my starting point. There we went. Okay, I have 120 stitches still. Let's look at it now. All right, so. Looks pretty good. That was not much of an overlap that it left me hopefully it works remember it would have been ideal to have at least an inch or more of an overlap i will i just made my brim bigger than i guess i anticipated but anyways and then um if you have an overlap there's really nothing you need to do with the millinery wire it just stays put but if yours is peeking out a little bit you can just bend it down um a little bit and we'll probably need wire benders for that i'll have to find some just a minute but anyways that's what it looks like so far now what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to edge it um with you can go around it with another row of just regular single crochet if you want you can leave it like this but i, I would prefer i think it would be better to do another row so i'm going to use the reverse single crochet otherwise known as a crab stitch it's a nice finishing edge and it's actually very easy to do it's a single crochet you're just doing it in reverse it's just going to be hard for me to show you on this hat that has the stiff brim now but i'm going to show you anyways so what we're doing is we're just working a regular single crochet but we're working it in the opposite direction so just go into <laughs> let me move my stitch marker your next stitch going in the opposite direction and single crochet like that so it's really easy and then you go into the next stitch and single crochet and then the next one 
and single crochet. I'm just trying not to bend my wire. So that's what I'm, it's what it's it's not difficult. I'm just making it look difficult at the angle I'm holding it. Go into the next stitch and single crochet. It's really quite easy once you get the hang of it. You're just doing a single crochet, but in reverse. We're just working in the opposite direction. And as you can see, my wire is popping out. I'll take care of that in just a moment, but because um, I didn't have a big enough overlap. The uh, reverse single crochet makes that little like, it kind of looks like a ribbon wrapped or, or yarn just kind of been a wrap, like it's been wrapped around. It gives it a nice finishing edge. So I'm gonna do this all the way around until I get back to my starting point of a reverse single crochet in every stitch. If I could do it all over again, I would have ordered a longer wire. It's very frustrating. Oh well. You live and you learn. Okay, reverse single all the way around until you get back to your beginning. Uh, if, you can, if you're having trouble with the reverse single crochet, just do another row of regular single crochet um, around the front, or you can even do slip a row of slip stitches would make a nice finishing edge to make it look kind of unique. That's just some different options you can do. But that's the look of the single reverse single there. Okay, I've made it back to the beginning and just go ahead and slip stitch into underneath that into that first stitch there. So just like that. This is this is the hardest part of a reverse single, that slip stitch. There we go. Let me just tie that off and then let's look and see what we got going on here. So we'll have to hide that tail. Okay. So it looks pretty good. See where my wires are at. They're not really sticking out too bad. But if you happen to get a little bit less wire, I, like I did mention, I would recommend you getting more than what I did. That way you know you have enough. But you can take it and pull it through the bottom with your wire little benders. And just bend them back up just a little bit so they're not poking out of the top of your hat. And bend them back at an angle so they're not poking you on the inside. But of course they'll be on the inside or the back side of that the rim of the hat so I doubt it'll be poking you but there we go now what we need to do is put the bow on after we hide this tail let me go ahead and hide this tail real quick so now what we want to do don't mind my hair is try the hat on mm, nice I like it looks good now if you want to leave it like this that's fine you can bend the wire and stuff, and otherwise it just stays pretty straight. I like it a lot. I think it turned out nice. But I'm adding bling to mine. So put the hat on, and then you put, if you have this bridal belt, and you put it where you want to place it, and it's got this ribbon. Go ahead and just kind of tie it in the back it's got a long ribbon which you probably don't want that much but if you do by all means you can keep it but just tie it on um it doesn't have to be perfect just so you know how tight you want it on your hat so when you take your hat off we can glue it in the proper spot so there's that now i'm gonna it's tied on of course i'll get rid of some of that but i'm going to take my hat off turn my camera around we're gonna glue this on Okay, so there's that. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of some of this excess ribbon that I don't want. So you determine how long you want your ribbon to hang. And you can clip it or slice it at an angle or however you want to slice it. But I probably might trim it up a little bit more later. But now we know, see how it's hanging over? We've already tried it on our head and we tied it so we know that's where it needs to be glued on. So go ahead and grab your fabric glue. And if you have gloves, that always is probably a good idea because this fabric glue is stinky and it's kind of like super glue. But anyways, put a little bit on the inside of your ribbon. It's hard to get off your hands if you get it on your hands, so be careful with that. And then 
take it and put it right down there on the brim and hold it there for a little bit <clears throat> we're going to do this all the way around the hat this is what's going to hold our embellishment on now if you just want to use a regular ribbon that's fine it works too like you don't want the bling just use a piece of ribbon and go around it the same way tie it on your head and then glue the ribbon on okay and now i'm going to add a little bit more here to the inside of my ribbon this stuff is Sometimes I use hot glue, sometimes I use fabric glue. I think either or would work fine, but make sure you put your hand in there so you get your hat stretched out to the way that it was when it was on your head. Press it, hold it firmly. We can go around the tops a little bit later once we get the big major part of it glued on. So, the heavy part anyways, if you're using this. Hopefully that is not on crooked. I think it'll be okay. Okay. There we go. Now try it on again. Make sure it's in the right spot. Make sure it feels comfortable on your head. And that it's not making it too tight. Okay. Mine's fine. So. Now you want to. If you want to leave the ribbon unglued. You can. That way you can adjust the tightness of your hat. I think that's what I'll do. So, I'm just going to glue the uh, bling embellishment on really good. And then when I get back here to the ribbon part that ties, I'm going to leave that unglued so I can tie it and retie it on my head to adjust it. Now, if you don't want to do that, by all means, you can just make your bow perfect and then tie it on and glue it on so it never comes undone. Or if, you have, if you're using the straight ribbon, this glue part of it, if you want to you get back here to almost the end and leave part of it unglued or leave put nothing on your hat at all it's it's up to you I'm just so now i'm going around kind of the top of my bling here that didn't get glued and add in a little bit of glue to that we just want to make sure that it's not hanging over, hanging off your head And then you just glue this whole piece on the top make sure remember i'm stopping back here at the ribbon i'm not going to glue any of that once i get to my uh, blingy piece i'm not going to glue any more of that ribbon on that way my hat can be i can just tie my hat on each each time i put it on as tight or as loose as i want it that way it's not perma stuck on you never know maybe you want to put your hair up all inside the hat or something or you need it to be bigger so or if you give this to someone that maybe has a bigger head or a smaller head than what you did to measure that way they can adjust the ribbon and just tie it on themselves there we go oh i didn't hold that down and then it came undone okay i'm going to continue gluing on my piece and then i'll meet back up with you spot done pretty cool looking 
here's my ribbon I'm, I really am not good at tying ribbons I've mentioned that before but you know you can leave these as long or as short as you want and this right here is not glued so I can adjust it as I put it on my head let's see what it looks like let me turn my camera around real quick all right this is it you know I think it looks good I do wish I would have used a different color of yarn so my bling would show up better but you can see my ribbon in the back you know to see what it looks like outside in the sun maybe the sun will bling off of it what do you think but otherwise it's pretty it turned out pretty good it's a nice little sun hat thanks everybody for watching if you make this um don't forget to show me a picture on instagram also don't forget to hit uh the like button and the subscribe button if you enjoyed my tutorial don't and hit the notification bell on the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos so thanks everybody for watching have a good day and stay safe okay Hi everybody, it's Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this bucket hat. There's no wire around, no wire needed around this brim. It sets steel the way it is because we are using two strands of yarn at the same time. Now this hat is a little bit bigger. Uh, looser hat because it is I made it a little bit looser um, because uh, for a sun hat uh, you can always make it uh, tighter if you prefer it to be a tighter on your head than what it is you could use a smaller hook and that would make it tighter on your head but um, as it stands um, I think it would fit anywhere from 20 inch head <clears throat> probably to 23 something like that <clears throat> but like I said, if you have a smaller head, uh, feel free to knock down. You can knock down the hook size by hole sizes. So, um, or, you know, something like that. What do you think? I like it. I like it a lot. So you can see it's got some bee stitch, di different bee stitches up here. It does have a little edging around it. Of course, you can leave that off, but it turned out really well. Remember, there's no wire in this. It's just a nice standstill bucket hat. Keep the sun on your eyes. Let's do it. Okay, here's just a little bit closer up of the stitches you can see right here. And just always remember, this is a bit bigger of a bucket hat. Looser, looser style. And here's the brim, and it has a little bit of an edge. Of course, you can leave that off if you want. I'll show you what, what uh, yarn I used. So for this particular project, I use Walmart's brand Mainstay Sparkle. It is a 100% acrylic, well, almost 100%. It's got some uh, sparkle in it. Um, medium weight number four. Now, I used two strands at the same time. So I used two different, I, have, I had two different um, balls going on at the same time. So I held my two strands together. The whole time that's what makes the hat so um, stiff looking um, almost like you use like a type of raffia or, or something uh, jute or something you know that holds it in place that's why we we double strand it so it was a stiffer hat and we didn't need no wire around the brim or anything but you don't have to use this yarn um, any type of four weight yarn will work I think a good recommendation also as well if you do not want to use an acrylic, I think a four weight cotton um, doubled up like this, two strands of a four weight cotton would work really nice too. Um, that would probably make um, a little bit more breathable of a hat. But as far as using acrylic, it's fine too because it's it's breathable anyways because it's got some thick, uh, it's got some holes up here. So it makes it breathable um, as well. So any four weight acrylic, a four weight of cotton, um, you're going to need, we're going to be working two strands at the same time, and you're going to need about, let's see, there's 251 yards per ball. This is how much I have left of um, one ball. So you're going to need a probably about 300 yards, uh, maybe total for this hat. But remember, you're going to want to use two uh, hanks at, or two hanks or two balls, skeins, whatever you call them, two at the same time. Double, double the yard, double it up. 
And I'm going to be using in a size I, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. Please never mind the hook that I'm using in my video. It is a different color, but um, an I is what you want to use. And if you do want to make it smaller, you can knock it down to um, a five millimeter or even a, uh, yeah, five millimeter, five, five millimeter, make it smaller. But remember your stitches are going to be pretty tight because we're working with those two strands at once. So depending on your size of head or how tight that you want it. But to fit, I have a 21 inch, 21 inch head. I use the eye hook, the double strand yarn, and it fits me well. It's just, it's loose like I want it to be, but not extremely loose where it's gonna fall off your head. So, but if you want it tighter, like I said, knock it down to a uh, five millimeter, an H. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and please, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of the hat. The comments always help. And if you make this, let me know what kind of yarn you think that you'll use on yours. Will you use cotton or acrylic? Or let me know if you're even going to make it or not. So anything like that. But you guys want to go ahead and get started. I think it turned out really nice. I like it. I'll probably wear it this summer. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off with a slip knot on our hook using both strands of yarn. All right, so we're gonna start with a chain of four. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to be slip stitching into the first stitch to form a ring. So we'll go right into that first stitch and slip stitch. So now we have a ring that we can work in. We're going to start off with the chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. It doesn't count as anything. So let's go ahead and begin and we're going to be working some V stitches through the center of the ring. So a V stitch is one double crochet, a chain of one, and then another double crochet. So we're gonna go ahead and yarn over and go through the center of the ring and we're gonna make our first V stitch. So we're gonna do a double crochet, a chain of one, go back in and do another double crochet. So that is our first V stitch through the center of the ring. We want to have a total of six. So again, we're going to yarn over and go into the ring, draw up a loop, then we're going to go ahead and do our double crochet, chain one, go back through the loop again and do it, or do the ring again and do another double crochet. So that is another V stitch that we just did. So now we have a total of two V stitches. So you might have to keep sliding them over as you go. So let's go ahead in and do another V stitch. So double, chain one, and double. So that is three of these stitches we have done so far. Again, double, chain one, and double. So there is four so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue until I get a total of six of these stitches through the center of our ring. All right, so I'm coming to the end of round one and I have done six V stitches. You can tell because if you count, you'll have six chain one spaces. So we're gonna go ahead and end round one by slip stitching into the first double crochet of our first V stitch. And you'll have a total of six here at the end. And now we're gonna go ahead and start round two by slip stitching into our first chain one space. So go ahead and slip stitch right over into there. And we are going to chain one. And now what we're going to work is some V stitch increases. So we're going to be working in this first chain one space. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to put a go through the space and we're going to put a double crochet, a chain of one, another double crochet, through that same space, a chain of one, and then another double crochet 
through the same space again. So that was our V stitch increase. We did a double crochet, chain one, a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet all into the chain one space from the previous row. So this is what we are gonna work in each of the chain one spaces all the way around for round two. So we're gonna jump all the way over here to the next chain one space. We're gonna do this inside that space. So we're gonna go into the chain space and we're gonna work a double crochet, a chain of one, another double crochet, a chain of one, and one more double crochet into that same spot, just like that. Again, we find our next chain one space, which is right here. And we're gonna do this same thing again, right here into this space. So we're gonna go into the space and we're gonna work a double chain one, go back in and work another double chain one, and one more time, go back into the same space and work another double crochet. So this is the pattern we're gonna repeat all the way around for round two until we get back to our starting point. Okay, so I've come to the end of round two. Now you should have six of these V-stitch increases or you'll have 12 chain one spaces all the way around at the end of round two. So we're gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching right here into our first double crochet of our first V-stitch increase. Let's go ahead and slip stitch like that. And that'll end round two. So now we're gonna go ahead and start round three by slip stitching into our first chain one space right here. So go right over there and slip stitch into it. And we're gonna chain one, which does not count as a stitch. So we are going to go and we are going to go work right in here. We're gonna start the repeat now of round three. Into the, uh, we're gonna put just a regular V stitch into the chain one space. So we're gonna do a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet into that chain one space. And then to the next chain one space, we're going to do the V stitch increase. So we're gonna go into the chain one space here, the next one, and we're going to do a double crochet, chain one, back into the space, a double crochet, chain one, back into the space, another double crochet. So that will be the repeat for uh, round three. So the next chain space right here, we're just gonna put a regular V stitch into it. So go right through it and we're gonna work a double, chain one and a double. And then the next chain one space, we will work a V stitch increase. So we'll go into the space and we're gonna work a double, chain one double, chain one, and then another double into the same space. And then we will repeat it again. My yarn's getting tangled. There we go. <laughs> In the next chain one space, we just do a regular V. So go right into it and work double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then the V stitch increase into the next chain space here. Double, chain one, double, chain one, and double. So we're gonna keep repeating this pattern until we get to the end of round three. We're gonna do a regular V stitch into the next chain space and then a V stitch increase into the next. Regular V, V stitch increase all the way around until we make it back to our starting point. All right, so I've come to the end of round three and you should have six regular V stitches and six of the uh, V stitch increases for a total of 12 all together. Um, your last stitch should have been a V stitch increase and we're gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into our first double crochet of our first V stitch. I'll end around three. 
Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start round four. Slip stitch over to the chain one space of our first V stitch. Like that. And we are going to chain one. Now what we're going to do is in this V stitch here, we're going to work two double crochets, a chain of one, and then one double crochet all into this same spot. So we'll go ahead and begin and we're going to work two doubles. There's one. There's two. We're going to chain one, go back into the same spot and only work one double. Just like that. And that is the stitch that we're going to work in every single chain one space all the way around. So we're going to jump to our next chain one space, which is right here. And we're going to work two double crochets into the space, a chain of one, go back in and work one more double crochet. Just like that. And we jump to our next chain one space right here and we do the same. We're gonna work two doubles a chain of one and one double, just like that. Jump over here to our next chain one space and we're gonna work two doubles, chain one and one double. So I'm going to repeat this pattern for round four of two doubles, chain one, one double, in every single chain one space all the way around until we get back to our starting point. All right, so I've made it to the end of round four. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first double crochet here. Now, what we should have at the end of round four is 18 of these two double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. So you should have 18 of those total. Now, round five is the repeat round. And so we're gonna start round five and we're just gonna repeat it for a, for a few uh, rounds to get some length on our hat. So for round five, what we wanna do is a slip stitch two times until we get to our first chain one space. So we slip stitch here, slip stitch one more time into the chain space, and we are going to chain one, and we're gonna make we're gonna do that same stitch again. So that's gonna be the main stitch that we do for the top part of our hat. So we're gonna be working back into the chain one space, and we're gonna work two doubles, a chain one, and one double. And that's what we're gonna work in every single chain one space all the way around. So here's our next chain one space. So we're just gonna go right over to it. And into it, we're gonna work two doubles, a chain one and one double. Again, jump over to our next chain one space, which is right here. And we're going to work two doubles, a chain one, and one double. So I'm going to repeat this pattern, working at two doubles, chain one, one double, in every single chain one space all the way around until we get back to our starting point. All right, so I've made it to the end of round five. And as you can see, it will it's starting to come downward just a little bit. If it was flipped up a little bit like that, that's okay. We'll flip it downward like this. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and end by slip, slip stitching into our first double crochet. And this is the repeat round now. We're gonna repeat this row. You should have 18 every time of these two double chain one, one double uh, V-stitch things. So, 
in every chain one space, we work the two doubles, chain one, one double. And so we're just for round six, we're repeating round five. We're just going to keep repeating round five for a few more rounds and you'll start to notice your hat will start to kind of look like a hat <laughs> after you get a few more rounds on it. So I'm going to continue. Remember you'll have 18 at the end of every round each time and I'll let you know how many rounds I do here in just one second. All right, so I have went ahead and done a total of nine rounds and that is starting from round one. So if you start from round one and count all the way down and I ended at round nine. Um, and you still should have your 18 of these little uh, double crochet, chain one, one double crochet, V stitches. Um, and now we are gonna start round 10 and we're gonna do a row, a row of single crochet. So I just ended in, my, in a slip stitch into my first uh, double crochet there. So what we're gonna do is just chain one. I'm gonna go back into that same spot that we just slip stitched into and I'm going to work a single crochet. And now I'm going to work one single crochet into every stitch and into every chain one space all the way around. So it's one single I'm working into every double crochet. And then when I get to a chain one space, I just go right through the space and single crochet as well. And I'm going to repeat this one single crochet in every stitch and in every chain one space until I get back to my starting point. Just like that. All right, so I've made it to the end of round 10 and what we're doing is we're starting our, the brim part of our hat. Um, so once you make it to the end, you should have a total of 72 stitches. Now, if you want to use a stitch marker here, uh, that would be a good idea to use a stitch marker. That way, because we're going to work in a continual round, so I'm just going to use a piece of yarn here. So we got 72 stitches now to start up our brim. We're going to work a single crochet. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to work 11 single crochets in a row. So we just go, we're, we're going to do some increasing. So we're going to jump to our first single crochet and we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. I don't know why I keep dropping that other strand. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And in the next stitch, we're going to put two single crochets into the same stitch. Just like that. And that's what we're going to repeat all the way around. So we're going to do 11 single crochets in a row again. There's 11 and then two single crochets into the next. So we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker. All right, I just finished out around 11 and I've made it back to my stitch marker. Your last stitch should have had two single crochets in it and now you should have a total of 78 stitches. So we're going to go ahead and move our stitch marker up like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put one single crochet into the next 12 stitches.
right? Here's 12. And then the next stitch, we'll put two single crochets into it. So this is the pattern now we're gonna repeat for this round. It's very similar to the previous round, except we're doing one single crochet in the next 12, and then two single crochet into the next. One single crochet into the next 12, and then two single crochet into the next, all the way around until you make it back to your stitch marker. All right, I've made it to the end of around 12, and you should have a total of 84 stitches now. And you should end it with two double crochets there in your last stitch. I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch mark marker up for round 13. And now I'm going to put one single crochet into the next 13 stitches. and then two single crochets in the next. So that is the repeat now for this round. Just one and two. One single crochet into the next 13 and then two single crochets into the next. One single into the next 13 and two into the next all the way until we make it to back around to our stitch marker. All right, so I've made it to the end of round 13. You should have total of 90 stitches now. Um, you should end it with two single crochets in your last stitch. So I'm gonna, gonna gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker up and start round 14. Now I'm not gonna increase anymore. So what I'm gonna do now is just I'm gonna work around putting one single crochet in every stitch until I make it back to my starting point. So no more increasing. One single in every stitch all the way around to you make it back to your stitch marker. All right, made it to the end of round 14 and you still should have a 90 stitches. I'm gonna do one more round. I'm gonna do like an edge on mine. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and move my stitch marker up like this. And this round 15 will be the final round. You can actually be done now if you want. Um, if you want to stop here and not put an edge on it, um, you can just slip stitch into your next stitch and then tie off. Um, but if you want to do the edge like me, I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I went ahead and moved my stitch marker up. What I'm going to do is slip stitch into the next stitch like that. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And I'm going to chain one slip stitch into the next stitch and chain one and that's what i'm going to do all the way around it just gives it like a little bit of a so it's just a slip stitch chain one and we're doing this in every stitch slip stitch chain one let me do a few and i'll show you kind of what the edge looks like on it in case you don't want to do it um slip stitch chain one into the next slip stitch, chain one. The next one, slip stitch, chain one. And this is what I'm going to repeat all the way around. Slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, chain one into every single stitch. And then that's what it kind of looks like there. Puts a little, just so it's not so plain, I guess, on the end, but I like a plain too. It's really completely up to you with your hat. You know, you wear it however you want. I'm just showing you, a, a, you know, a, an edge you don't have, you know, that you could use for something else too as well, in case you didn't want to use it for this hat, but it's just a slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, chain one into every single stitch until we get back to our stitch marker. And that is, so this will be our final round. I like it. I think it finishes it out nicely. 
All right, so I've made it to the end of round 15 and I made it to my stitch marker. I slip stitched and then I did a uh, chain one. And now what I'm going to do is slip stitch into the next stitch like that and pull it out, clip my yarn and hide the tails. Take that marker out. We don't need that thing anymore. Hide my tails and then it will be finished. I like it. I do. I think it looks really nice. You know, it would look look it would look nice without this little uh, edge as well if you left yours off. But I hope that you enjoyed my tutorial. Uh, please don't forget to have a like and subscribe. Um, and check out all my hundreds of other tutor tutorials. Sorry about my stutter. I have lots of other sun hats as well as this one. And many, many of anything that you could ever want to make. So thank you all for joining me. Um, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye guys. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this granny square um, sun hat here. So it's made with four grannies, as you can see, and they are sewed together there with that zigzag formation. It's not a hard hat to make, but uh, you know, you're gonna need to know how to do singles, doubles, um, in, uh, single crochet increases and decreases but don't be intimidated I'll show you how to do it all um, it's not hard to do now it does have a millinery wire on it which is a type of craft wire you don't have to put the wire in it um, you can leave it like a floppy brim hat if you choose you can make your brim longer or shorter it's that's all entirely up to you it's your hat um, so the hat is worked, we work the granny squares first and sew them together, and then we put the top on, and then we do the brim last. So what do you say? You want to go ahead and get started on it? I think it turned out really well. You can bend this brim. Some people like, I don't know, I've seen them on, people wear wire brim hats all differently, but remember, wire is optional. Um, the floppy, I, I tried it on without the wire and it looked pretty cool too as a floppy brim hat. So either way, will look good. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project, I am using Yarn Inspirations, Caron Cotton Angel Cakes. I got these at Michael's. They are a, a 60 cotton, 40 acrylic blend, medium weight, number four. Now you don't have to use this yarn. Any medium weight number four will work. Um, even uh, like a type of raffia yarn would probably would work would work well too. I actually want to do a hat in that too. Oh, those are my stitch markers. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, if you're interested, I did use three colors. So the color I used, I used uh, Sunny Day. I didn't use too much of that, and then I used the color. Uh, coral rose again didn't use too much of that my main color that i did use was this one which is um 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 <laughs> sea salt that's the color so but of course you can use any colors that you want you can make it solid you can use um put them in any order you want it's it's completely up to you it's your hat but i think total all in all, you're going to need approximately about 300 yards of four weight yarn for this. And then you're going to be using, we're going to be needing a size I shea hook. And you're also, if you decide to make it a wire brim hat, I use millinery wire. So you can, this, you can find that, well, they do sell on Amazon sometimes. Um, this one I purchased uh, five yards off Etsy someone was selling it on Etsy so I did have five yards so I have enough to make two hats because I have a some left and you don't have to use millinery wire um, I have made wire brimmed hats with the knot wire um, I've used a uh, fishing line um, like a thick fishing line and I doubled it up um, that seemed to work pretty well you can use a um, probably an you want to use about an 18 gauge if you want to use like a craft wire 
uh, I think this is an 18 gauge uh, craft wire. I probably wouldn't recommend like regular floral wire unless it's like a thicker one. Otherwise it's gonna be, I think, too bendy. Um, but you can definitely try it. You can definitely try that. Um, you can go to home improvement stores and look in their wire section and just get us a, a roll of 18 gauge uh, wire, uh, speaker wire, something like that. And you know, pretty a lot of stuff works if you can't find this millinery wire. But like I said, this I purchased off Etsy and I have purchased off it off Amazon. Also, I'm sure you can do a quick Google search and find it other places. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first thing we're gonna first thing we're gonna do, sorry about that, is the four squares. So we're gonna make them all the same. I'm starting with yellow, but you start with whatever you want. So we're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook. Okay, and we're gonna use it do a chain of four. And then we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch to form a ring. And yes, you can use the magic circle here if you prefer. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to do a chain of one. Now that chain of one does not count as anything. Okay, so we're just going to pretend like it's not there. We're going to work two double crochets back through the center of the ring. So there's one. And two. And then we're going to chain one. And we're going to work two more double crochets through the center of the ring. One, two, again, chain one, two more doubles through the center of the ring. Now we're going to continue doing this, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, until we have eight sets of two doubles, or 16 total double crochets. So I have three sets now, so I chained one, I'm going to go, go through again and work two doubles. So go ahead and continue working two sets of two doubles with chain ones in between till you get a total of eight sets or 16 stitches. You might have to slide them over as you go to get them all fit. Well, I'm, making, I'm just going to finish. I'm almost done now. I only got one more here. There we go. So after your last one, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sets of two double crochet or 16 double crochets total. You can pull your tail close up that center circle just a little bit and now after this last set we're going to chain one and end by slip stitching into our first double crochet now i'm going to switch colors so i tie usually i tie off when i switch colors so i'm just going to go ahead and tie off you don't have to switch colors and if you tie if you don't if you switch colors without tying off that's fine too however you switch colors so I clip my yarn there. Now I'm going to start my orange or my peach color here. And I'm going to work in the chain one spaces. So I'm going to go ahead and start my yarn in that just right in that chain one space. Put my hook, draw up a loop, chain one, which does not count as anything. And we're going to work four double crochets inside of this chain one space. So there's one, two, three, and there's four. Now I'm going to chain one 
and I'm going to work four double crochets in between in the, the next chain one space here. One, two, three, four, chain one. Find the next chain one space and we work four doubles into that. So this is what I'm going to repeat all the way around for round two of our granny square is four double crochets in each of the chain one spaces with the chain one in between. So again, I chained one, find my next chain one space, four double crochets. Chain one and repeat. So I'll meet back up with you at the beginning. Okay, I'm coming around to the end. I want to make sure I chain one after my last set of four and end by slip stitching into my first double crochet. Again, I'm going to switch colors, so I'm going to tie off my yarn. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring in white now. So we're going to start in any one of these chain one spaces. And now we're going to form the corners of our square. So we're going to go in to the chain one space and we're going to chain one. That doesn't count as anything, okay? Just nothing there. Doesn't count as anything. Go in and work the same space and work two double crochets. So there's one and there's two. Then we're going to chain one, go back into the same space and work two more double crochets. So that is the first corner of our square. Now what we're gonna do is chain two, and then we are going to skip two. So we skip this one and this one, and single crochet into the next. Then we're gonna chain two, and we are going to skip one and single crochet into the next chain one space. Then we're going to chain two. We're going to skip one and single crochet into the next. And we're going to chain two. And we are going to work in the corner here or work a corner right here in the next chain one space. So we're going to skip two again with this chain two on our hook. Skip these two. Skip, skip. And in this space right here we're going to work two double crochets. Chain one. Two double crochets. So that is corner number two. Now we're going to chain two, skip two, so skip, skip, don't forget this one, sometimes I get to pull your stitches back, so skip, skip, single crochet into the next, chain two, skip one, and single crochet into this chain one space. Chain two, skip one and single crochet into the next stitch chain two skip two and in this chain one space here we're going to do another corner so we're going to go ahead and work two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets And we're going to repeat that again. So we're going to chain two, skip two, make sure you pull that back so you can get this one, skip, skip, and then the next one we single crochet, chain two, skip one, and in the chain one space, single crochet, chain two, skip 
one, so this one, and then the next one, single crochet, chain two, and then we skip two, and in the next chain one space, we work our last corner. So we work two doubles, chain one, and two doubles. That, chain two, skip two, skip, skip, single into the next, chain two, skip one, and single into the chain one space, chain two, skip one, and single into the next, chain two, and you'll have two there left to skip, and in by slip stitching into your first double crochet just like that so that's what it kind of looks like so far now i'm going to keep the white on my hook and what i'm going to do is chain one and i am going to go back in to the same stitch here that i just slip stitched into and work a single crochet now I'm going to skip the next stitch and I'm going to work directly into this chain one space. I'm going to work single crochet, a chain one, and another single crochet. Like that. I'm going to skip at this first double crochet here and single crochet into the next. one single crochet into the next chain two space one single crochet into the top of the next single crochet one single crochet into the next chain two space one single crochet into the next single crochet one single crochet into the next chain two space one single crochet into the next single crochet one single crochet into the next chain two space one single crochet into the next double crochet then i'm going to skip this double crochet and in this chain space here of the corner i'm going to work one single a chain one and another single like that so i'm going to repeat that all the way around so let's do it again so we're going to skip this first double crochet and we're going to single crochet into the next and we're going to put one single crochet into the next chain space one single into the next single crochet one single into the next chain space one single into the next single one single into the next chain space one single into the next single, one single into the next chain space, one single into the next double, and now we're going to skip this double crochet and work in the chain space of the corner and work one single, chain one, and one single. So that is what we're going to repeat all the way around. Again, we're going to skip the first double crochet, and in the next one, we are going to single. And then we single in the chain spaces and the single crochets. One single in each chain space and one single in each single crochet. And when you get here to the two doubles, single into this first double, skip the next double, the one closest to your chain space, and go into the chain space and work one single, chain one, and another single. And we're almost to the end. So we skip this first double crochet and single into the next. 
in a single one time into every chain space and every single crochet so we get back to our starting point Okay, I'm back to where I started. I just single crocheted in that last chain space. And right here is my first single crochet. I'm going to switch colors. So I am going to slip, I'm going to end by slip stitching into my first single crochet. If I can get it. And I'm going to tie off here. Clip my yarn. Okay, now you should have a total of 44 stitches. So you should have 11 stitches on each side of your granny square. And then you'll have your four chain one spaces, which are kind of hard to see, but they're there. So I'm gonna switch colors and I'm gonna go back to my yellow. Now remember, you switch colors as often as you like. And I'm going to go ahead and start in the chain one space. So it's kind of hard to see when you're doing with these single crochets, but it is there. So right there is the first single crochet. I'm going to go right in between them. You got to dig around a little bit, but you can find it. Start in that chain one space. I'm going to chain one which doesn't count as a stitch now I'm going to go back into that chain one space don't go around this stitch this is a single crochet right there see that so make sure you keep that pulled out of the way keep your space open and we work a single crochet a chain one and a single crochet now we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch across do not forget this very first one or you'll be off. So you got to pull it over, your stitches over, and get that one. You don't want it to, to be off. That's the hard one to see. Now I'm going to work across. I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my next corner or my next chain one space. Okay, I'm coming up to it. It's hard to see. You gotta look closely. Pull them apart. This is single crochet there, so don't, there's your chain one space that you need to go into. Go into that and work a single, a chain one, and a single. Now we're gonna continue working one single crochet in every stitch. Make sure you don't forget this very first one right here. It's very important that you get him. Can't miss him. Working one single crochet across until we get to our next chain one space. And then I'm going to continue this pattern all the way around until I get back to my starting point. Okay, I have made it all the way around and I'm going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first single crochet over here, which is hard to see, but you'll be able to get it. Now you should have a total of 52 stitches. So I'm going to tie off. You need to have 13 stitches on each side of your granny square. Make sure you have that. It's very important that we keep the correct count on these. Changing colors. I'm going to do one more round. And I'm going to go to the orange. So I'm basically going to do the same thing that I just did on the previous round. So I'm going to find the chain space here of this yellow. Like I said, it's kind of hard to find it, but it's there. And that's where I'm going to start my orange yarn. And I'm going to chain one, 
go back into space and work a single crochet a chain one and another single crochet again very important that you don't miss this very we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch again this till you get to the corner it's very important that you don't miss this very first single crochet so pull your corner stitches back you got to get him just like that and then one single crochet in every stitch until we get to our next chain one space So we're doing the same thing we did on the previous round, just like this. And then in the corner, dig around, find your chain one space. One single, chain one one single make sure you get this very first single crochet and we continue working one single crochet in every stitch until we get to our next corner so i'm going to repeat what i did on the previous round all the way until i get back to my starting point okay when you make it back to the end we're going to end by slip stitching into our first single crochet and we are going to tie off now we should have a total of 60 stitches you need to have 15 stitches on each side of your granny square okay so your granny square needs to measure five inches right about five inches um if you if you crochet like a lot tighter than me and yours is smaller you could you use a bigger hook um because you you need to have 15 you can't take off a row and you can't add any rows because you need to have 15 on each side that's very important so uh, you can adjust your hook size to make it um, right at, at about five inches you don't want it a lot over your hat will be too big because when we the way we sew it together we use this um, chain method there that crisscross chain method and that's going to add some a little bit of make your hat a little bit wider so you don't want it um, very much more than your squares we can learn five inches so you're going to need to make four of those just like this hide all your tails and then we'll sew them together okay so after you get your four granny squares made we're going to sew them together up kind of like that see how they it has ha has a little bit of a zigzag motion going on there okay so we're going to be sewing them with the right side of the granny bear, granny square facing up so i have these two sewn and i'm going to sew the other two on so this is how we're going to do it so you want to go ahead and start with a slip knot on your hook whatever color you decide to sew it together with or crochet it together with i'm going to use my white okay so it doesn't have to be perfect well you can see mine is not perfect mine's kind of crooked right here but that's okay because it's not going to matter once we once we go around it so so you don't have to be real precise but we're going to try to do the best that we can so uh our two stitches in the corner on this square we're going to go through the one that's on this side so go through it and i got that uh pull through like that pull through that loop that's on my hook slip stitch through it like that and now what I'm going to do is do a chain of two so one two now I'm going to grab my other square and I'm going to go through the same stitch but on this square I'll show you how we're going to do it so we take <clears throat> so we take this square and we're going to find the here's the corner we're going to find the one that's on this side so probably i'm just taking a guess because it's not going to be perfect um this one now i'm going to go through the top of the stitch so i think it's this one and i'm going to go through the top of it like that and i'm going to slip stitch through 
that stitch. So, slip stitch like that. And then I'm going to chain two. Now it's going to be easier. Now I'm going to come over here to the next, over here to this granny square. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to skip one stitch and I'm going to go into the next stitch and slip stitch. I'm going to take my hook from the top though, the top of the work. I'm not going underneath it like that. I'm going from the top down and slip stitching. And then I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to go back over to the next, the other granny square. And I'm going to skip one stitch and slip stitch into the next from the top of the granny square, not from underneath it. So I take my hook and I skip one. So I'm skipping this one and going into this one from the top of it like that, going through both loops and slip stitching. I'm probably making it look more difficult than what it is. It's really, it's really not difficult. It's awkward, I guess. I'll say it's awkward. Now we're going to skip one stitch again on this one and go into the next stitch from the top of your work down like this. Slip stitch. Chain two. Go over to your next square over here. Skip one. And slip stitch into the next from the top of your work. So let's see where I'm at. Right here. Slip stitch. Chain two. And I'm going to continue this all the way up. Go over here to this square. Skip one. Slip stitch into the next from the top of your work. Chain two. Come over to your next square, skip one, and slip stitch into the next from the top. Yes, it is a little awkward, but it's 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 not hard. It's just once you get to going. Chain two, come to your next square, skip one, slip stitch into the next. Chain two, go over here to your next square, skip one stitch, slip stitch into the next. And I'm going to do this, like I said, until I get to the top here. So I'm going to continue and I'll meet you back up at the top. And as you can see, it gives it that little bit of a zigzag look there on it and you can see mine's like it's not perfect it's far from perfect but that's fine because we'll straighten it up whenever we do the brim and whenever we do the top the brim of it down here or whatever and the top of it up here so if one's a little higher than the other it's it's cool we'll take care of that so don't worry about that okay i'm coming up here to the top so i skipped one and i went through my last stitch on this granny square that i could go because i'm at the top now so i'm going to chain two again and then over here on the next granny square, <clears throat> I am going to skip one and slip stitch into the last stitch from the top and tie it off. Maybe, it's, it's, it's a tight stitch. There we go. I'm gonna slip stitch into it and then clip my yarn, tie it off hide the tail there we go so there we go so let me move my camera back out so you can see it better now okay so now we have i have two of mine or three of mine sewn together so that's how we're going to get that's how we're going to get them all sewn up okay so i'm going to go ahead and do my uh the win and then we will have our four and then we'll put them together and do our last one okay so i got mine four hooked together now we're just going to I do the make it to where it's one ring so we're going to do the same thing we're just but after we get done with this one it'll be attached and then we can start working on the top of the hat and the brim of the hat so I still have the right side of my work facing me and I'm going to sew these together the same way as we did the other ones 
So we just start with our slip knot and do our best to kind of get the corners of each one here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It won't be perfect. Well, yours might be, mine's not. <laughs> mine's not at all. And then kind of do your best to get it over here. Let me look at it. <clears throat> Sometimes it's hard to tell. I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> Taking a guess. All right. So I'm just doing it the same way as I did my other ones, okay? And when I get to the top, I'll just go ahead and it'll, it'll, they'll all be sewed up and they'll just be in a round. And I'm going to hide all my tails and then we'll start on the top and the brim. Okay, so I got my piece sewed up here. I didn't hide my tails yet, but that's what it looks like. So that's going to be the hat. I'm going to just uh, sew these toes, tiptoes, his tails in as I go. So I'm going to start on the top of the hat. Now, if you remember correctly, we have 15 single crochets across the tops and the sides of each of our uh, granny squares. So let's go ahead and start in any one of those that you want. Actually, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's just start. I'm going to start in the white, this white space right here. So for each one of these chain two spaces, I'm going to put two single crochets. So I'm going to go ahead and start out in this one. <clears throat> I'm going to pull my yarn through and I'm going to chain one. Now I'm going to go back into the spot and try to hide these tails as I go. And I'm going to work two single crochets just right through this space. So there's one and there's two. Now we need to work across here and get our 15 single crochets that were across our granny square. So if you need to count to make sure, make sure you're going in the right ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there is 15 for me so I have done 15 across and then the two in this chain space here now I'm going to go work into the next chain space um, so you can see that there is this stitch has been worked so I've done my 15 across so I'm just going to jump into this chain space right here and put two single crochets in it so there's one and two and then I'm going to do 15 across this granny square here. So I'm going to count to make sure where I know need to know where I need to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 14, 15. Yep. Okay. So this one has been worked. Just make sure you get 15. If that's why I say to count across first in case uh, maybe you accidentally have 16 or something but by sewing it up it didn't come out right you can skip that very first one if you need to be if you need to but you should have 15 across and you need to have 15 across for the count to come out right um, on the top of the hat so make sure you do have 15 so I'm gonna count across this one there's one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It'll be tight here. Fourteen. And there is fifteen for me. Now I'm going to work two into this chain space right here. And this is what I'm going to do all the way around. So I have two more granny squares to go. And I just need to make sure that I'm doing 15 across. 
and then two two single crochets in each of those chain spaces so I'm going to continue around until I get back to my starting point okay so I made it around the the top here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a stitch marker because that will help me keep track of where I end and where I begin. So I'm going to use this PCR and I'm going to place it right here. Now you should have a total of 68 stitches now. We had 15 on uh, the four tops of the four granny squares, which would be 60. And then we had two in each of the four chain two spaces. So it would be 68 and that's, that's what you need to have. So now what we're going to do is we are going to do decreasing. So we're going to take these two stitches that are in these next two stitches that are that we put in the very first chain two space and we're going to decrease them down to one. So we're going to go into the first one and drop a loop and then we're going to go into the next one and drop a loop. We'll have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and go through all three like that. Now we're going to put one single crochet into the next 15 stitches. And now we'll be at the two single crochets that are in the chain two space again. And again, we're going to de single crochet decrease over them. So we're going to go into the first one, drop a loop, the next single crochet, drop a loop, and yarn over and go through all three loops. Okay, again, we're going to put one single crochet into the next 15. and you will be at the two single crochets so they're in this chain two space here and we're going to decrease over them again so we go into the first one and drop a loop and the next one drop a loop yarn over and go through all three one single crochet into the next 15 again Okay, now we're in the two that are in the chain two space, decrease over those. So go into the first one, drop a loop, the next one, drop a loop, yarn over and go through all three. Then we're going to go ahead and put one single crochet in the remaining 15 stitches. And I'll meet back up with you when we get back to our stitch marker. We should have a total of 64 stitches when we make it back around. Okay. So I've made it back to my stitch marker and I do have 64 stitches. So now we're going to start doing more decreases. So we're, start, we're on the top of the hat now. So we're going to go ahead and move our stitch marker up. We're going to close up the top. So what we're going to do now is we are going to put one single crochet into the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to do a single crochet decrease over the next two. So we just go into the next one, drop a loop, the next one after that, drop a loop, 
three loops remain, yarn over and go through all three. And that's what we're going to repeat all the way around. So actually this would be um, row three of the top, I guess. Row one would be the where we put the first row of single crochet. Number two is where we started our, we did our first decrease row and the this is row three would be our second decrease row. So again, one single crochet into the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and decrease over the next two. So I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until I get back to my stitch marker. One single crochet into the next six and then decrease over the next two. Okay, I'm coming to the end here of row three of the top of our hat and you should end in a decrease. So you should have, I did my six single crochets and I had, should have two stitches that remain. Decrease over those last two stitches and you should have a total of 56 stitches now. So now we're going to move our marker up and now we're going to do another row of decreasing. So now we're going to do one single crochet into the next five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to decrease over the next two. That. Again, one single crochet into the next five. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then decrease over the next. And I'm going to continue this repeat of one single crochet in the next five stitches. There's two, three, four, and five, and then decreasing over the next two until I get back to my starting point. All right, I'm coming to the end of row four of the top of our hat. So you see we got one, two, three, four, and you should have two stitches left. Um, and go ahead and decrease over those last two stitches. Now you should have a total of 48 stitches, and we're gonna move our stitch marker up and decrease again. Now we're gonna put one single crochet into the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and decrease over the next two. So there's our decrease. Again, one single crochet into the next four, one, two, three, four, and decrease over the next two. And this is the repeat we're going to repeat now for round five and a half. One single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, four, and decrease over the next two. So I'm going to repeat this all the way around until I get back to my stitch marker. And this is what it's starting to look like. So if it's getting kind of bumbly and like wadding up a little bit, that's fine. It's okay. It's going to lay right on your head. It's just looking that way because it's decreased and you're not doing anything wrong. So just continue that four single crochets in a row and then, you're, and then you're decrease back to your stitch marker. All right, I've made it all the way around and I just finished out one, two, three, four, round five of the top of my hat. And I should have a total of 40 stitches now. You should have ended in a decrease. So I'm going to go ahead and move my marker up. We will continue decreasing in the same manner that we have been. So now it's one single crochet into the next three. So there's one, two, three, and then decrease over the next two. One single crochet into the next three. There's one, two, three, and decrease over the next two. And I'm going to continue this pattern all the way around. One single crochet into the next three. And decrease over the next two. And I'll meet back up with you when we get back around to our stitch marker. All right, I made it back to my starting point. I ended at a decrease and now I should have a total of 32 stitches. 
at the end of the row or around six of our top of our hat so again we're going to move our stitch marker up one single crochet into the next two stitches so there's one and two and then a decrease over the next two one single crochet into the next two there's one two and decrease over the next two yeah. one single crochet into the next two there's one and two and then a decrease over the next two like that and i'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until i get back to my stitch marker it's getting close not much left okay i've made it back around uh your last stitch should have been a decrease again move your stitch marker up but you have 24 stitches now okay now this time it is one single into the next stitch and then decrease over the next two so into the next draw up a loop into the next draw up a loop yarn over go through all three one single into the next and decrease over the next two it's getting smaller getting a little harder to make sure you keep your stitches pretty tight together so one single and then single crochet decrease that's the main uh thing when you start to get when your circle starts to get smaller is try to keep your stitches tight because they'll kind of want to get stretched out so one single and then decrease especially the decreases one single and then decrease one single and decrease one single decrease one single should decrease and you should be at your stitch marker now there we go you should have a total of 16 stitches 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 okay i do okay now this part is just we're just going to keep it decreasing until our circle is so small that we can't do it anymore so actually i'm just going to remove the stitch marker since we're not gonna i'm just gonna go around and around in decreases keeping it as tight as possible until i can't do it anymore and then we'll sew the rest of the hat up so go into the next stitch and we'll do our decreases no stitches in between the decreases very important to keep it as tight as possible when you're doing this your stitches anyways so you don't have a big hole holes at the top of your hat and you just keep going around until you feel like you just can't do it anymore and that's whenever you get to that point we can just will you sew the top up finish sewing the hole at the top up with a yarn needle getting to that point for me <laughs> it's getting harder okay I think I'm about there now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a long tail here and clip it off and I'll sew it shut with a yarn you at the top so I'll pull that through and I'll get my yarn needle okay so I got a hole up there it's fine we'll take care of it right now I'm just gonna kind of weave it through like this all the way around in and out of these stitches and then this pull it shut
ta-da! It's gone. The hole is gone. And like magic, it no longer exists. Now I'm gonna kind of just tighten it up and hide my tail at the same time, neatly, so you can't see it. If you want, you can pull your tail onto the inside of your hat and hide it, but I think mine's going to be okay doing it on the outside. Just like that. No more hole. Now we're going to try it on and see if it fits. Hopefully. Hopefully. I always usually wing these, <laughs> wing my patterns, so I don't, don't know until I try. So go ahead and clip off your yarn there at the top. And then let me try this on real quick. She fits. Wow. She fits. Okay, let's do the brim now. Let's get started on that. Now the brim is going to be similar. I'm going to do mine in white. Except for, we're going to do the first row. Um, decreasing. or uh, We're going to do the first row and the second row the same as we did at the top. Um, but the rest of the rows, we're going to be increasing instead of decreasing. Which will make the brim wider. So, we're going to stop any, start off anywhere, like we did before, in one of these chain spaces. So, any one of them, I'm going to try to hide the tails as I go. So, go right through it. Now, we're working on the brim of the hat. Chain one. And we're going to do two single crochets into that chain space. So, there's one. And two. Now, we need to work across and make sure we get 15 single crochets across each one of the granny squares. So, make sure you count one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Fourteen, fourteen, fifteen. Two single crochets into the next chain two space. And then we are going to continue this just like we did up on row one of the top of the hat. And then fifteen across here. And then two into your next chain two space. And do that all the way around until you get back to your starting point. Okay, I've made it around my first row of the brim, and you should have 68 stitches, just like we did before. I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker here, and now for row two, I'm going to decrease over the first two stitches in this chain space. So, go right in, and work a single crochet decrease, and then I'm going to work one single crochet into the next 15. So, there's one. There's 15. Single crochet decrease over these two stitches that are in the chain two space. And again, single crochet over the next 15. And we're going to repeat this pattern until we get back to our stitch marker. Remember, it's the same thing we did up at the top on row two at the top of the hat. Okay, I have made it around to the end of round two of the brim of our hat. We should have 64 stitches. Now we're going to be increasing until we get the, to the size that we want our brim to be. So, 
we're gonna go ahead um, and move our stitch marker up we have 64 stitches so I'm gonna put one single crochet into the next seven stitches there's one two three four five six seven now we're going to put two double crochets into the next just one and two and that's the repeat we're going to repeat all the way around one single crochet into the next seven there's one two three four five six seven and two single crochets into the next stitch one single crochet into the next seven again and two singles into the next and we're going to repeat this pattern until we get back to our stitch marker okay i've come to the end of round three of our brim now your last stitch should get two single crochets in it it should always end in an increase and now you should have a total of 72 stitches you should have eight more we're always going now from now on we're always going to have eight more stitches than we did the previous round so we're going to move our stitch marker up and we're going to start again and now this time we are going to do one single crochet into the next eight stitches so there's one two three seven eight and two single crochets into the next and that's the repeat now for this round one single crochet into the next eight and two single crochets into the next so i'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until i get back to my stitch marker it's okay if you start to notice it going boom at the increases kind of waving up we'll take care of that later on at the end so don't don't pay that no attention right now okay i'm coming to the end here of round four of the brim and you should always end with the two single it should always evenly end with two single crochets into your last stitch and now you should have a total of 80 stitches and remember don't worry about the bumps of where the increases are now we're going to continue increasing in the same manner until we get the brim as big as we want it to be so again i'm going to pull out my stitch marker and now I'm going to put one single crochet into the next nine stitches. And then two single crochets into the next. And that is going to be the repeat now. One single crochet into the next nine. And two single crochets into the next. I'm gonna repeat this pattern all the way around until I get back to my starting point all right i've made it back to my starting point into round five 88 stitches now is what i have it's always eight more than the previous round 
So I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch marker up. Now I'm going to continue this um, off camera. So for this next round, it's one single crochet into the next 10 stitches. And then we do two single crochets into the next. And then when you get back, you repeat that. And when you get back around, you should have eight more stitches than you did the previous round. And then the next round will be one single crochet into the next 11 stitches. And then you put two single crochets into the next. The next round will be one single crochet in the next 12 stitches. And then you'll have two single crochets into the next. So every round is one more stitch between the increases. You always have eight more stitches at the end of each round than you did the previous round. So you do this until you get your brim as wide as you want it to be. All right, I am done with, I'm not gonna make my brim any bigger. So I have done where I had, I finished where I had 16 single crochets before my increases or a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12 rows on the brim. Remember, you can do it as big as you want it or as small as you want it. Now I'm going to add my millinery wire to mine. Now, if you're not adding this, that is fine. Just when you get finished uh, making your brim, as long as you want it to be, um, just add two rows of one single crochet in every stitch. That's it. Um, and that should even out the points here and then you'll have a little bit of a wave to your hat since you're not putting the wire in but since i'm putting the wire in here's what i'm going to do so i'm going to go ahead and take out my stitch marker and i'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch i'm going to switch colors so i'm going to make my last two rows of single crochet i'm going to tie this off uh, different colors so with my scissors tie that off like that now I'm gonna start with another color I think I'm gonna bring in yellow <clears throat> remember you don't <clears throat> you don't have to do this you do the coloring any way you want okay with the millinery wire what you want to do is if you haven't used this before and you have it is wherever you're gonna start your yarn so I'll just start my yarn um, just a few stitches over from where I just ended so you want to leave about two or th two inches or so of millinery, two or three inches of millinery wire here um, as a layover. So say I'm gonna start right here. I just go in to a stitch and pull my yarn through. It's a little difficult with the wire, just getting it the first first row down. I'm going to chain one over, I'm just crocheting that wire in is what I'm doing. So I'm going to single crochet back into that same stitch. Like that. Okay. Now it should be a little bit easier as we go. Remember to leave a layover there of, of wire. I don't know what I got there. Two and a half, maybe three inches, two to three inches, something like that. <clears throat> now I'm going to put one single crochet and every stitch around and I'm just going crocheting that millinery wire right along under it just like I'm acting like it's kind of like you're crocheting over a tail just putting that single crocheting like that over the top of that wire now I'm not doing any increasing or anything I'm just putting one single crochet in every stitch And I, like, I'm probably making it look harder than it is. It's not, it's not hard. So it's just, like I said, <laughs> sewing their granny says awkward, but it's definitely not hard. Just getting it. I'm trying to hide tails at the same time too. So I'm trying to hide the wire and the tails all at the same time. So that's probably why it's awkward for me like to do things the hard way I guess 
I just don't like sewing in tails. So I'm putting one single crochet in every stitch over the millinery wire. You want to be able to see it. And remember, no, in, no more increasing. And I'm going to do this all the way around. And I'll meet back up with you whenever we get whenever I get over uh, near this area where we're gonna need to overlap the wire okay so one single in every stitch crocheting around the wire okay so I'm coming around here to where my, my my wires are starting to line up and all I'm gonna do is just overlap them and single crochet around two wires now instead of one whenever I get to that point it's hard because my hat has a wire around the rim and it's not flexible anymore, so it's hard to maneuver and kind of show you. But uh, I'm doing my best. I'm just trying to show you. It's uh, just like hiding the tails. You're just going over two pieces of wire now as opposed to one. Don't worry if some's sticking out. We'll tuck that back in. And we just do this until we get back around to our starting point and then we can fiddle with the wires and get them where they need to go underneath the stitches. The first thing we have to do is make sure there are crochet on. All right, I'm gonna do this going through both wires until I get back to my starting point. My, and then we'll tuck in our ends of the wires and. I'm sorry that I'm not very close up to the camera. Like I said, my wire's in the way now. I can't bend my bend my piece. Well, I'm almost there now, so I guess I might as well just finish it up. I'm gonna go around again, but I'm gonna change colors, so I'm gonna tie off. If you're not gonna change colors, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do when I make it back around <clears throat> to my starting point, I'm gonna end by slip stitching into my first single crochet and clipping this yarn off because I'm gonna go back to the orange that I started with and do one more row. So clip that off, pull that through, and now let's maneuver these wires how they're supposed to be, or how it's supposed to. It's always flat. So some of this extra can be cut off or hidden underneath these stitches here. You can kind of pull it and hide it a bit under the stitches. That's probably what I'll just do because I don't even have any wire clippers. I had a hard enough time clipping off the ex this extra wire. I had to bend it like a hundred times. I never have nothing I need. So I'm just going to tuck it under single crochets there we go and I'll do the same for that one okay I can fiddle with that some more <clears throat> at the end and make sure all my wires are hidden but for now I'm going to do another row of single crochet if you want to do a slip stitch you could do that around the the around it again that would look cool you can leave it the way it is you could do picos you could do uh, the crab stitch or the reverse single crochet um kind of anything that you really wanted to do but i'm just going to leave mine at single crochets this time last time i made one of these hats i did reverse single so i think this time i'm just going to do regular single so i'm just going to start somewhere back here into the yellow. I'm not going around the wire anymore. I'm just going into the stitch. And working one single crochet in every stitch. So I'll start with a chain one, go back into the same stitch and single. And I'm going to work around putting one single in every stitch until I get back to my starting point. I'm going to hide any tails as I go and then when I get done I'll maneuver that wire and 
hide it underneath the single the crochets or clip it off. I'll try to find some wire clippers or something. Any extra wire that's hanging out. So this last row that I'm doing is one single in every stitch. All right, I'll meet back up with you when I get back. When I get back around to the beginning, I'm just going to end this by slip stitching into my first single crochet and tying off and hiding any tails that I'm that I have hanging around. All right, once you are done, you're done. That's all. That's all there is to it. I hit all my tails. Now, if you did put the wire in, you can bend it to your likings or whatever you want to do with it. Or, you know, it's a bendable wire. So some people like, I don't know, make them taller on one end. And I don't know, you can do whatever you want to do. But that's it. I hope that you're able to follow along okay. Remember, if you make this or if you make anything um, crochet or knitted related, I'd really love to see a picture of it on my in, uh, Bag of Day Crochet Instagram account. Come give me a follow there. And hashtag me in it. Hashtag Bag of Day Crochet. Show me, show me what you made. So, oh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my other videos. I also have other sun hats and hundreds and hundreds of other tutorials. And lots and lots of yarn content. I like yarn a lot. So um, I will see you guys on my next video. Stay safe. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye, guys.